Hey everyone, um, this is just a video response to uh, Trish's Stripper Diaries. Um, I can... I can't say I can totally relate to what she's saying, but it really hit home with me because I do work in the same industry as her, or that she did work in. Um, and I kind of copied her idea of keeping a diary about my work, and she calls hers, you know, the stripper diaries. I call mine strip club stories, because I'm not, she says strippers, I like to say dancers. Um, just because I don't like to offend anybody or make them feel labeled or less than they are when I'm at work. And so, I'm not a dancer. However, I am a cocktail waitress at a gentleman's club or strip club, as they're commonly called. And I just call it the club. I'm going to the club. I'm working at the club. Yeah, work tonight, Jasmina. Yeah, I'm working at the club. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I don't have a typical father daughter relationship as well. Um, my dad and I are more like friends than anything. Like we still have that father daughter, you know, dynamic, but it's just different. Like, you know, like Trish was saying, like, he's always been there for me. He's always had my back. He's always given me everything. But I got cut off, too, by him. Um, like, I have to pay for my own school. Um, I have to pay for my own clothes, for my gas, for everything except for, you know, like, food and boarding and, you know, like, car insurance that I can't. You know, all the things that I can't afford on my own yet. Um, so, in that aspect, I'm, like, slightly cut off. <laughs> I guess I could say. Um, but it's nerve-wracking telling your dad something like that. It is so hard. Like, even though I'm not, you know, stripping... It was so hard to tell my dad, look, I'm working at a strip club. I'm, I feel like I, like, the, the dancers are here and then I'm down here <laughs> type of thing. Um, and I, I was just, like, didn't know what to say and I, I was trying to plan out how, the best way to say it without him getting mad at me and, you know, um, I eventually just said, hey, I am, I'm looking for a second job because my first job isn't giving me any hours, really, and I need money. I can't rely on you. I can't sit here and say, hey, pay for my gas all the time. Um, you know, buy me this or buy me that. Like, I never, I never ask for them for, you know, like, frivolous things. Um... And I, I want to be able to pay for it myself. And so I told him that, and I told him I literally applied everywhere. And this is the first job that gave me an opportunity. I will get a different job as soon as one opens up, as soon as I find one. I never found one. Um, it's, well, in my opinion, I didn't find one. Um, I found, like, different retail jobs and things like that, but they just work you like a dog for minimum wage, and then you end up having to, like, buy their stuff and use their stuff, so all your paycheck goes to them, and it's just a mess. So my dad understood, and I was like, look, it's payroll plus tips, and it's not in a, like, grimy place, it's not, like... You know, where it's really unsafe or anything. It's, 
not the best one where I could be making a lot more money, but it's certainly not the worst one where it's just a front. So, yeah. Um, working at as working at the club, um, you have to be strong, male or female, especially female. Um, I say male because the bouncers, the general manager, general manager has to deal with everything in the club, and the bouncers can, in, at least in California, cannot physically or at least in San Diego, <laughs> cannot physically remove you from the club. So it's all mental, it's all verbal, it's all in your head. And being female, it's just that much more mental. As a waitress, I get men who want me to get up on the pole. They want lap dances, they want to go home with me, they want to take me back to their hotel, they want my phone number, they want to kiss me, they want to grope me, they want to be a little too friendly. And it's all mental. It's really all mental because you cannot represent a club by saying, hey, fuck you, get off me, Unless they're, you know, like, actually, like, you know, coming at you, like, attacking you. But, I mean, if they're just, like, you know, copying a feel here and there. Or saying, hey, you, can I take you out tonight? You can't just, you know, go berserk. Like, you get, you have to get a bouncer and be like, hey, this guy's not cool. It's all mental. And it's a really influential place. So, like, you're going to be surrounded by alcohol, you're going to be surrounded by drugs, you're going to be surrounded by people who, you know, like I said, want to take you home. You're going to be surrounded by some girls who do prostitution on the down low. Um, all sorts of things. It's a very influential place. Like... I have to be so strong because they change the rules and the waitresses have to wipe down the pole. And I'm not the one to make everything boring. They want it they they want it entertainment. Like when you walk into the club, it's not just naked girls walking around. You're walking into a male or, you know, female, but mainly male, fantasy. The girls are the fantasy. The waitresses are the fantasy. The bartender is the fantasy. You have to look good. You have to act nice. You have to be the fantasy. They're there to see the girls. They're there to see, you know, tricks on the pole and, like, you know sexiness and, you know, just, er, er, I don't want to say erotic, but they, that's what they want, that they want this, I want it but can't touch it, fantasy, and so unfortunately, we have to deal with things that we don't want to deal with a lot of the times, and... You know, I have to be really strong, and I'm when I wipe down the pole, yeah, I'll do a couple of pole tricks, you know, really simple ones that are really quick, and, like, you know, I'll wipe down the pole like a dancer would wipe down the pole, just to give the guy something to look at. I'm not just gonna, okay, done. Like, I'm just gonna wipe down the pole, do a little hip movement, spin around it, you know, give them what they want, and then make a couple of dollars off of it, because, you know, they have the tip rail. And then I have the pressure of dancers being like, oh, you're, you're a stripper in training. You, like, you want to strip. You want to strip. We can tell you want to strip. No, I just think it's fun. I don't want to get naked or anything. I just think it's fun being on the pole. 
you know, when there's no one around and, you know, messing around on the pole with all the girls and bonding. I think that's fun. Um, and you're dealing with the coworkers as well. Like I said, like I get pressure from some of the coworkers that, you know, like they're like, you should be a dancer. You have the face for it. You have the body for it. You know, all the guys already like you. Be a dancer. Or they joke around and say, oh, you're, you know, you're a stripper in training. Um, or, you know, like you walk in those heel like I used to serve, um, used to serve in stripper heels, and they're like, you walk really well in them, why don't you be a stripper, you know, and just gotta be strong and say no, you know, like, hey, do you want this weed, hey, like, you know, this guy's got dank ass weed, or, you know, hey, you want this, you know, part of this fifth, you know, like, I, no, I can't do that at the workplace, I, no, that's not me, and you have to be mentally strong, and, um, as well as, you know, dealing with negativity, like being judged, um, like what Trish was saying, like, these, these stories are real. They're real. And they're emotional. They're heartfelt. They're, like she said, they're, like, some are lighthearted, some of them are full of pain, some of them are just bizarre. Like, the average person, if you're, if you are one of those people who are sitting there saying that all this is fabricated, you're ignorant. Because you don't know what's going on behind those couches. You don't know what's going on behind those curtains. Um, it's, it's more bizarre than you think, really. Um, I had a co-worker who was giving a lap dance, and all of a sudden, the guy decided to take off his belt, which was studded, and started whipping her. She, she called the bouncers, like, he got, you know, kicked out and whatnot, but she had to ice her ass for an hour, and she still couldn't sit down. That's how badly he was whipping her. Just stuff like that, like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think. Like, you think you just get, like, a little air dance, a little lap dance. No, sometimes, sometimes you get beat down. It's not cool. It's not. And 